back to another vlog or welcome back if this is your first vlog. My name is Claude and I have a knitting page on Instagram called Odyssey Fiber Arts where I share all of my fibery crafty stuff and I just started a vlog last week. So welcome and uh, thank you for joining me on this journey of probably messing up a lot and uh, ADHD crafting. So a couple of updates. I started on my test knit for our back knits, uh, short and sweet, um, kind of crop top with the puppy sleeve I showed last video. Uh, so <laughs> I messed up twice. The first time around I actually twisted the stitches and I was able to fix that. And then I realized that I was using the main body needles instead of the ribbing needles which meant I had to pull out an inch and a half of a uh, knit. And the yarn that I have for this test knit is kind of fuzzy and mohairy. So I ended up having to cut a little bit here and there. And the cast on part would not um, pull apart. So Pepper has a new toy. There you go, babe. So let me show you what I have so far. Uh, it's not much. I just started with the ribbing again. I'm gonna do, oh, I have random needles everywhere. Is there, is there another pair? Let's see, there's another pair. Uh. Right, so I haven't gotten too far. I have restarted the ribbing and it looks much nicer than how it's supposed to look. I'm gonna do an inch and a half of this and then start on the main body. This little pumpkin stitch marker I got from Yura at Knit Boop Studios. I believe it's just that Knit Boop. But uh, yeah, super cute. Um, and it kind of fits the theme because I did choose a very uh, Halloween-ish theme with this and the other kind of orangey yarn to go for the main body. And it's just one by one ripping so far. So wish me luck. So next, I don't have much of an update on the Jessie May bralette. It's still at this little section of uh, ribbing. I'm just stuck on a ribbing island for all of these knits. Um, but that is because I spent a good couple days just churning out sleeves for my other test knit, which I actually finished, and we'll get to that one a little bit later. Right, so if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I actually started weaving, and this was the end product of my first weave, where I was kind of just experimenting with like these little patterns. I had a lot of fun with it, it's the first time that I actually enjoyed uh, weaving. I tried it about four years-ish ago, and it was just on a smaller, like, four by four kind of um, coffee or tea cup coaster kind of thing, and I hated it. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. I wasn't sure why it was taking so long, and um, Claude of the past was a little less patient than Claude now. I think you're supposed to block these. I think, as far as I'm aware, and I haven't done that. Uh, but what I wanna do with it is kind of either fold it in half and make like a little notions bag or fold it in like thirds and make like a little satchel bag, right? And then you would just, yeah, and it'd be lined with something. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how I wanna do it. I think this looks really cute right here, um, but it also requires me to make a buttonhole, unless there's a, a different way that I can like maybe have two buttons and like just kind of wrap it around or something. I'm not sure yet. Still kind of contemplating on what I want to do with this. Um, I know I kind of need a stabilizer to 
uh, so that it doesn't like kind of frump around when it's in bag form. And I have fabric that I got from a thrift store that I want to use as the inside lining. It doesn't really match, but I got it from a thrift store. Uh, so I feel like it's a good practice fabric because I am very bad at sewing. I have tried multiple times in my life to sew and I have never gotten it down. Um, so this is gonna be attempt number 355. <laughs> Wish me luck. I wanted to show what was on my spinning wheel, but I think I'm gonna save that for another video because I'm still working on a spin that I was going to do for a sweater for my sister and I don't think I've touched it in about a month. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit more and then we'll see if I have um, something to show next time. All right, so I talked a little bit about the Izawa sweater um, Ariely Knits, uh, my friend Riley designed, and I don't think I'm supposed to show the final product until release date, so I'm not gonna show you the whole sweater, but I am gonna show you what I snuck into the sleeve, just a little, you know. If you know, you know. But yeah, I am, uh, waiting for the release day, which should be sometime in May, to post pictures and uh, show the thing, the whole thing in its entirety. I really liked knitting this sweater. It wasn't a complicated sweater. I made it more complicated because I made some adjustments to it um, as far as the yarn, because I didn't have enough skeins of the same color yarn. I was uh, alternating between yarns and um, the construction of it is bottom to top, so you have to split the front and back at the top, which made it a little bit more difficult to continue doing the uh, kind of a striped pattern because I had to keep alternating yarns and then kind of slip all the stitches from one end of the needle to the other to get back to the other side. Uh, and I learned how to knit uh, backwards, is what I'm saying, but I'm sure there's a name for it. I think it's called flicking, um, where it's from left to right. And that's how I kind of did the purl side because my purls are very loose. So if I had done my purling on this, the sweater would, you would, you would be able to tell. And the way it is now, it, it looks great. You can't tell. I haven't blocked it, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping it turns out well. And it's supposed to be an oversized sweater. So um, if you pick up this sweater pattern when it releases, just keep that in mind. It's supposed to be oversized. It's supposed to be a very comfy kind of just throw on over whatever you're wearing if you need to go somewhere quickly kind of thing. Um, I'm probably going to live in this sweater after I block it because it is right now it's like perfectly fits me and when I block it I'm assuming it's going to stretch which is going to be nice because I've always wanted a nice oversized sweater that fits me and doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Uh, my next finished object is something that I put off from January, or not January, June of last year. I started knitting this sweater in June of 2021 and I picked up a couple of test knits and as that goes, I put it aside and I was like, I'm just gonna work on it later. And then I never did. And then I realized it was January 2022 when this was still in one of my project bags. And uh, <laughs> I had eight different projects in project bags that I managed to either frog because they weren't speaking to me anymore or I finished them because I really wanted to wear them. And this sweater was one of those. This is the Sheep Camp Sweater by Jennifer Berg at Native Knits. And um, I kind of made it cropped so it's gonna look a little bit cropped right now but it also isn't blocked so i'm assuming it's gonna stretch just a little bit maybe about there 
and then that'll be perfect. And if it doesn't, that's fine too. Uh, so I said sweater, but it's kind of more of a sweater shirt now. I initially was just going to stop after this part and then just knit the sleeves because I just wanted something to throw on um, over like a tank top or something for when I went to the movies and it was kind of cold in the movies but then it was like warm outside and I ended up doing the complete opposite of that and did not put sleeves on it and <laughs> just made it a crop top but it is super cute it is finished the only thing that I need to do is sew this in but I'm waiting to block it so that I can sew a little tag on it so yeah I'm really proud of this one. I'm, I'm glad I finished it. I love the colors. Uh, I don't know if it's like washing out, but yeah, I love this and I'm super excited for it too. Something else I had been working on was trying to design a hat, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I did whatever to this hat. It is just uh, two sport weight. I think they're sport, they're like sport DK weight. Uh, two by two ribbing for the brim and then it's a brioche top all the way like that but it's actually reversible so when you flip it inside out it is cabled so I thought that was really cute and let me see if it actually fits because like I said I just did whatever oh yeah, that's cute. What do y'all think? What do you think? Yeah, I like it on this end. Let's see about the other one. Flip. Yeah, I like it. I definitely like the cable end more just because it's, I guess, brighter. But I like this too. So I guess if I was feeling a little subtle, I'd wear it on this end. And if I wanted something bright, I would wear it on the other end. But yeah, let me know what you think of those uh, different FOs. Do you like them? Are you thinking about making some of them other than the hat? Because I haven't actually written that design. Uh, <laughs> So I also wanted to talk about a couple of things that I purchased. Um, the first being something that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $10. It was a great deal. Um, so I met somebody up about 40, 50 minutes away from where I live. Thank you to Laura Jean from Knitted Wit for recommending looking up Facebook Marketplace for things like that. <laughs> It's a weaving loom. Look at how old these instructions are. They're like, if I'm not careful, they're, they'll tear. They have that old book smell to them. It's pieces that I have to put together. I did notice, yeah, there's, one tooth there that's broken, but hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. I'll see, I'll see what I can do to fix that. But for $10, and then there's the shuttles and more stuff in here. I think that was one of my best finds so far. Um, if you don't know, I like going uh, thrift shopping and I'll definitely go in and check like the craft section, the fabric section, if they have a yarn section. So I found some really good pieces of fabric there. I find sometimes I find good yarn that isn't scratchy acrylic. I have nothing against acrylic, just the scratchy one bothers me. Um, I'll find things like that. I'll find uh, weaving looms. The original weaving loom that I used for that piece that I finished, uh, I found in a thrift store and it, it was a complete set. So next time you're at a thrift store, kind of check the kids toy section because that's where they'll put them for some reason um, and see if they have any kind of craft section or any kind of, you know, um, 
fabric or maybe upcycle some like sheets or something like that but um yeah definitely recommend it so this last thing i have been really excited about i pledged or supported a kickstarter back in i believe it was june may or june of last year and it was for a yarn counter by the same people that do the um nano and the um eel wheel the electric eel wheel uh electric uh, spinners i got this in the mail yesterday and it's kind of small i didn't expect it to be that small but you know if it works it works and i haven't opened it i was waiting to film so bubble oh yeah so maurice the owner and the inventor of these and the eel wheel has been sending kickstarter updates since we got or since we pledged um every month or every two weeks he would send updates and so we kind of got to see what the prototype looked like we got to see uh, all the little um innovations he added to it like for one we don't have to unscrew anything you can just and it's magnetized. You can put it back on. Easy peasy. And two, it doesn't come with batteries, which you can tell. <laughs> so I actually have batteries. Yeah. And it beeps. Came with a little instruction booklet and um don't know if you'll be able to scan that with your phones but it should take you to the website if you can and a um wraps per inch card and i was reading and it said to match up your yarn to whatever wraps per inch it is and set it in the menu so let's yeah that which is the second screen from where it starts um i actually caked up this hand spun from last year i believe and i think I think it's somewhere around 360 yards is what I estimated uh, the hard way <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and try that out and see what happens so it comes with a little thing to attach it to wherever you need to Pretty stable. Measured my yarn up against this card. I think it's either a 12 or a 15. 15 seems to work better. So that's what I'm going to set this at. Let me get back over there. Alright. So the one thing that I already don't like is it counts no matter which way you go so I can be going towards this way or the opposite way and it'll still keep counting um, reason I don't like that is if I accidentally pull back it'll count it I'm just gonna reset Yeah, there we go. And then the instruction said to loop it around. So I'm looping around once. 
Uh, you can loop around more times if your yarn is thinner. And I'm going to re-cake. Pepper hair everywhere. <laughs> All right, so 340 yards is what it says I got. Which, um, yeah, I think that's about right. All right, now that I made a mess on my desk, let's go ahead and talk about this. Aside from that one thing of it counting regardless of which way it goes, I love this. I think it's a great tool, especially for anyone who spins their own yarn. Um, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. I was doing it the hard way, uh, using my yarn swift because it, it has notches um, up to certain measurements. And I think 72 inches all the way around is one of them. So what I was doing was wrapping the yarn around and counting how many times it wrapped around and then multiplying that by 72 which kind of gave me a rough estimate now with this it's going to be a few yards off like i i already assume it's going to be a few yards off but it's not going to be as bad as i initially thought i had 365 yards right and i have around 340 which means that if I had tried to make something with 365 yards of it, I would have come up short. And now I can at least say, well, I have about 340. So let's uh, kind of aim for something within 330 to 340 and see how that works. So um, I love this. It is a very good investment. Um, I know Maurice worked really hard on this. He was sending us updates as often as he could from when they started making them to all of these little the colors where the button placement was this little design the springs and um i already got hair in it because hair goes everywhere um so yeah a lot of work was put into this and i absolutely love it i think it is very well made. I love the fact that I didn't need to have tools to open the back. Um, it was basically just put in two AA batteries and go. And I love that. Whatever makes my life easier at this point. So yeah, what do you think? Would you get one of these? It's on the website. They're um, Dreaming Robots. It's on their website now. They should have some in stock now. We got our last Kickstarter update was uh, that he received a boatload basically of them. So they should be in stock either, if not now, uh, as of this date, March 16th, they should be in stock soon. So I would definitely check them out. All right, so that was all I had for today. All of the updates, the works in progress, finished objects, all that all need blocking. And a um, couple of tools that I have got. What did you think? Honestly, let me know what you thought. Is there something that you're working on that I'm also working on? Is there something that you want to work on that I'm working on? Do you have any recommendations of patterns I should try by um, other 
indigenous or black designers. Any tools that you found that are cool like that, that uh, just make our life as fiber artists easier? Let me know. So that wraps it up. I hope I'll have more done next week. Um, the week after I go back to work and I don't know if I'll have an update schedule or anything like that. To be fair, um, I didn't think I would have an update schedule. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try for Thursdays. So yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time. Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog, or welcome if this is your first one.